Welcome to the second video demonstration for drawing translation in the spring summer 2021 semester. Today we're going to take a look at three different observational drawing techniques, each with a different objective in order to render a particular type of graphic effect in the marks that are being made. I'll go over the basic points of each and then also add details as the drawings are being created. The first one that we'll look at is blind contour. As the name implies, you're not looking at the page or the substrate as you draw and create the image. Imagine yourself instead, if you can, as an inchworm, moving very slowly and meticulously along the surface of the object. It's important that you draw both the interior and the exterior. Do not focus too much on the silhouette. Instead, think more about moving across and over the surface, capturing each detail. These images from blind contour drawings are not meant to look realistic. In fact, because you're not looking directly at the image, they will probably look very abstract. However, the goal here is still to be a documentarian and really make sure that you're recording what you're seeing through the mark making. Now let's take a look at what this process looks like. So here I've covered my paper with another sheet in order to discourage me from peeking. This is actually going to also help me focus on the process of looking more than the actual process of drawing and mark making. So there's an element of chance here. What I'm doing right now is I've started on the left side of the apple and I'm making some faint lines to sort of get the basic rounded form and shape. Then I'll move towards the inside and we're going to check now and see that I'm making lines that describe the volume as it moves over the top of the surface as well as the outside lines. I may, in fact I will, go back and redraw the same area of the object multiple times. Um, this is because I want to make sure that I'm interpreting it in different ways. Each time that I go back and I draw an area I may notice something new and it's important to record that. But in terms of design and graphic effect, this also results, as you can see, in a layering and a kind of time lapse. Now we have an image that doesn't necessarily look like an apple, but instead communicates apple through the rounded shape, through the presence of a at least a somewhat identifiable stem. And I'm concentrating now on the weight and stressing lines on the bottom of the form. So you can see I've duplicated it in a way, but that important idea that the weight and the gravity as it's held in the hand or sitting on the table is present. The next context, or sorry, the next um, technique that we'll look at is cross contour. This is where we use parallel lines to describe the direction of the surface of an object, the way that it's moving through space. Curving these lines communicates volume and depth, which is an important observational drawing skill, and we can also put perpendicular lines moving in the opposite direction for a greater 3D effect. A lot of these drawings look what would be most familiar in this context or in this day and time to 3D graphic software, where we put a mesh over something to make it three-dimensional. Now I've switched from an apple to part of a sweet potato. What I'm going to do is just establish a very faint but you know very meticulous line still for the boundaries the outside shapes and capture the silhouette i'm being faint as i can with the pen here but using and switching from pencil to pen there is an element of risk so i need to be quite careful and deliberate you can see that i'm picking up the pen a little bit in order to make fainter marks and also to give a sense that some of the form is protruding outward, forming the edges, while other parts recede. So I'm moving in one direction here. They're not exactly parallel lines, but I'm only mapping the vertical forms right now. And where I am layering up on the edges is actually to create a sense of depth. So layering up the lines um, and making those denser gives the illusion that that part of the form is pulling away from us in space versus parts that are lighter and include more white negative space will appear to come forward. I'm also not being too precious about the lines. Making something that looks exactly like a computer-generated 3D mesh won't actually be very expressive. 
the marks, the quality of them in terms of translation into a graphic design project will suffer, and the drawing itself won't be as visually interesting. Now that I've spent some time mapping the bottom half of the sweet potato and coming back and reinforcing some of those lines, it's time to think about what to do on the top surface. So I'm giving it a very uh, kind of generous, almost scribbly type of parallel set of lines just to describe that that surface is definitely moving across and slightly away from me in space. And now I'm actually going to come back and do more of that kind of scribble technique where I see sections that are maybe um, denser or tighter in terms of where the form rounds and curves in on itself, especially as it tapers towards the bottom. In this way, I'm trying to get at the idea of weight and shadow, although I'm not really depicting the shadows. This is more about how the form feels in my hand as I hold it, and, and also the sense of weight that comes through by looking at it. So a few more lines for finishing touches. And lastly, we'll explore density drawing. This is sometimes referred to as pointillism, but this is not entirely accurate, since pointillism was a specific type of painting technique from the Impressionist movement in the early 20th century. In density drawing, we draw with shape rather than line, and we're not describing edges of objects here. This is very important. Instead, we're thinking about the mass and the density, where things feel like they have the most substance, and we're going to showcase the versatility of an individual mark. What I mean when I say versatility of an individual mark will become clear as this drawing develops. Right now I'm starting out with some dots, although you'll see that I'm not being too precious that each one is a perfect little dot. Some are streaky, some are more like commas or apostrophes that have tails, and some actually start to approach what looks like scribbles. As I fill things in, I'm also thinking actively about the pressure that I'm applying. The harder and faster that I jab the paper, the more opportunity there is that it will not be a perfect dot. That either by slightly moving my hand as I move it down towards the paper, I will make more of a line than a point. Or if I press hard and then lift up quickly, I might leave one of those kind of curly tails like a comma or apostrophe that I said earlier. As I'm drawing right now, I'm just establishing some of the basic lines that describe the edges of the surface, but as I continue the drawing, I'll move to the interior. I'm also being careful to build up some areas where I know I want to imply shadow and weight, but not too much at this point. I'll come back to them in the end and develop that further. So now I've moved to the interior of the form and I'm thinking about creating some implied arcs or I'll come back to this in just a second. Okay, now that I've established the boundaries of the fore edge of the form compared to the back that's tapering away, now I'll go across the top. Here I'm making arcs of points that are much more spaced out. This communicates that they're not as tight in terms of their density. The form on the top of the sweet potato has a lot of volume to it, so I'm leaving the top quite open and white, while I'm condensing and communicating that the form winds onto itself much tighter as it rounds through space. I'm also being careful not to have a kind of perfectly even edge. So the curvature of my drawing won't match the sweet potato exactly, because I'm trying to add a little bit of expression and energy to it as I go. However, make no mistake that I'm still looking intently at the sweet potato. I'm not making up the form as I go. I'm being careful to check looking back at my object every couple of seconds as I move around it to gauge how far away this sort of 
um, the inner edge where you can see that the potato has been cut and it's sort of sealed or scabbed over, how far away is that from the actual edge where the skin begins? And how much of that do I actually need to show? A lot of density drawing, uh, because it's so time consuming to make individual marks, relies on implied lines and shapes. This means doing just the bare minimum and then letting the mind and the eye fill in the rest. And we do this a lot as humans already. So with density drawing, more is not always the goal. Less can be more, as long as you identify what the essential parts are to draw and describe of your object. Here I'm being a little more sporadic, but I'm concentrating on where I feel the form is densest in the center and making little clusters to try and describe texture as well. And finally, as I reach the end of the drawing, I'm going to turn away from looking so closely and think more about the visual character of the individual marks I'm making. I might speed up, increase my pressure, and reinforce some areas that I think need emphasis.